Hi guys, it's Mrs. Watson from MrsWatsonEducation.com, which is my personal blog to share all the things I've learned through teaching with you to make the profession a little bit easier. As we all know, we all need each other to survive. So today's video is about how to get started making Google Forms work for your classroom. There's so much more to do in Google Forms beyond just sending an email with a survey link to get feedback on things. Um, and as a teacher, there's so many things you can do with it to make your life much easier. So read my blog post about what you can do with that. Today's video is all about getting started. So I want to share with you a little bit about how it works. So what does Google Form look like in Google Drive and how do you get there? So the first thing is you're gonna log into your Google Drive and then you're gonna go up to the top left and click new. Most people are familiar with Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, but if you go down here, there's a section for more and one of the more options is Google Forms. So this is what the standard preloaded Google Form looks like. It's very blank, but very customizable. So the first thing I'm gonna do is write in my YouTube test. Okay, that's going to be my title of my form. If I click up there, it saves the title there. As always in Google Drive, it automatically saves your work. And this is a little bit how it looks. So the first thing before we get into the meat and bones of it and looking at all the different things you can add into the form, um, you can customize it so you can change the color. Um, you can add images as the header. So across the top, there's a bar. You could add a personal customized image. Um, you could go into different theme options um, and look at different parts of that, changing the fonts around. So the theme options, if you go up here, um, they already have some custom headers. So science teacher, I'm going to pick that one just because it looks really cool sciency. You could have them custom made and uploaded there as well. So lots of flexibility just with the appearance of what your form looks like. Okay, so um, I'm not going to get into responses quite yet, and then I'm also not going to go over there yet, but let's start looking at building the form and how you can do that. So the first thing is you put in your title, like I said, and then you can have your form description. So you can say, this is a test for unit four, um, or leave it blank if you don't want anything there, or you could give directions on read through the article and watch the video at the bottom. You're going to have to answer five comprehension questions after you go through that. Um, so many things you could do with directions, you know, students sometimes read them, so you might as well try to write them out. And then you get into your actual form creation. So there's a lot of options you can do here. Um, you can break the form into several sections. Uh, so that the first section is just the directions and they're forced to see them and read them and then they'll be able to continue on to the next section. Um, you can make one section just the reading, one section just the questions, or you could just keep it one simple section. Um, and that's really up to you. So you can always go through um, and continue what happens after that section. So there's options so you could like skip around if you're making a really crazy interactive form. Um, we're gonna keep it simple for today. So in section two, we are going to just go ahead and type in, I'm doing a form for a, let's say we're doing a test right now, because that's what most people will use it for first. Um, and I'm gonna write name because I want my students, to, I want to know my student's name. Who's taking this test? That's the first thing they should do. So I have some options when I go down to the question. You can add many questions up here. My first option is, well, it's, I want them to write their name in there. So I'm going to use short answer, but there's so many other ones you can choose to do. I want them to do short answer. I'm going to make this required because I don't want them to skip the name like they skip writing their names on the top of their papers. And then they have that there. Um, I can duplicate this. Ooh, I forgot. I want to write first name. Then I duplicate it and I want to write last name, right? So that is all there. I recommend if you're going to do a form with um, where you want to really manipulate data, breaking the first and last name up because sometimes they switch things around. It's kind of, that's just easier when you look at your um, Google Sheets spreadsheet so you can manipulate the data by first or last name alphabetically if you'd like. You could add class period, you could add so many things here to get your indicators and think about how you might be sorting your data. So that's my first section. I'm happy with that. I'm going to move on. So now I'm going to have a second section. Well, maybe I want to make my last name first. It's drag and drop. All you have to do is move it around, which is really cool. Um, now let's make our next section and that's going to be questions. Oh, I can't spell. There we go. Questions. And we have that there. Once again, I could, within this section, add specific directions as well. And 
let's look and see what you can do there. So questions we already saw, short answer. There's paragraph where you have long text um, writing. That's pretty cool, but that's gonna take a little bit more for the grading process. So talk about that quickly there. Multiple choice is always a good fan. It's really easy to add different options. Um, you could add picture options. There's so many things you could do with that. If you go down here for any of the questions, it's either required or not, um, which makes that really easy. There's check boxes. So if they wanna select all of the above or all the things that apply, those are great um, ways to ask questions drop down so that's kind of if you're doing a form where you want to quickly get information um, provided already there they can just drop um, drop down so you have those options so let's kind of look at um, let's do test one I'm gonna have a B cat because I can I'm gonna make this required oh I won't make that one required we'll do that now I'm done with that one I'm gonna go into a second question, I've already done drop down, check boxes, multiple choice are pretty easy. There's linear scales that you can adjust. So, you know, how much does this like describe um, the person's attitude? Very angry, or very happy on a scale of one to 10. You know, that might be subjective question because I just came up with it. Not the best question, but you can do lots with that. Um, multiple choice grids. This is kind of interesting because I just figured out that you can use this option, which is a newer one with Google, to actually make things like matching style questions. So if you put like the dis definition on this section and put vocab word here, when you see it, definition two, I can't spell today because I'm under pressure on a mic um, camera vocab. See, I can't do it. It's just not going to happen to me. Okay. Vocab two, that's what that looks like. Okay, I'm gonna make that one required because the other stuff might just be helpful. And that's another thing you can do. Sorry, I'm all over the place, but you have your questions and if you're making an assessment, you probably want them all to be required. But maybe there's a part of the assessment that you don't need it necessarily to be required. Like at the very end, you could do, how did you like this unit? Tell me all about it. Make an open-ended long paragraph and see what kind of instant feedback you get, which is really cool, but wouldn't it be a required response for them to actually submit the um, form? So that makes that really cool. If, let's say by any chance, the question comes, needs a picture. So I could go in here and browse for my images and add a picture into, oh, let me so go ahead and browse. I don't know what's going to be over there. Oh, I'll use the one I use for this title slide for this video because it's right there. So that's my picture. I could different align it. I could um, scale it down or make it a little bigger so that students have a reference point. So this is really helpful if you're doing diagrams and questions or anything like that. If you don't want to have a question um, tied to a picture and just have a picture in there, you just add a picture. And that's going to look a little different there. Same idea, but instead of being tied to the question, it's on its own. So this can be like if you're doing a review or in kind of a, um, I do this for my remediation work where I give them a long text. So I might just add, have them, um, or you could import questions too. I didn't know that. You could add titles and descriptors and text, right? So you have to type in all the text that you want them to read, informational text. And then there's the pictures that go along with it. You move it around however you want, which is so nice with Google, it's drag and drop. Maybe I wanna make that, the questions a different section than the reading and the picture. So that's done. Now I have four sections for my form. So that's really cool. And the same thing, you can add videos. So if in your um, remediation work, you want to add a video from YouTube, that's really helpful. So when sharing really good content and information, that's all available to you right there. So very, very cool. Um, now, that was quick, I know, because I'm a fast talker and I don't want this video to be super long. So there's a lot of other great resources online. Um, mine's just what I'm pulling together right now because I thought it fit well in the blog. But um, go ahead, if you have any questions, type them in. You'll find lots of answers of how you can do this better than this one, I promise. Um, so now let's look at preview. Now I love this because you can always see what your form looks like and check through. So this is our form, what we created. This is what you will send and people will open and see. Not the edited version right there, but your this is your published essentially form. So we're gonna go through here and see what that looks like. A, B, 
be, because those are required, I can't move on without them. Test, this is our drop down. I have cat and B. This is our matching, so I can do this. It's a required question, so if I don't select anything, which I can't do now, interesting, learning things as we go along, um, it won't let me move on. It would go say, if you missed one, don't forget that, go back. And here was our reading and our picture. Now I can submit the form. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like for responses before I get to show you about grading and how this can make your life so much better. So for responses, it's very cool that Google has this ability to show you instant graphs because we all like looking at data, right? Um, it's actually really helpful when you're looking at test questions. So you get kind of instant analysis of what's going on. Um, and that could be for the summary, which is really good to see the whole, if you have 150 students, the whole gist of it um, by question, which is helpful, like what was getting uh, the most chosen there. And for the individual, that's basically what they're they pick. So if you have someone that struggled, you could see individually what they chose. Now this is great for a lot of reasons, but I normally work within here. So if you go into responses and click up here where it says create a spreadsheet, it's going to ask you your spreadsheet title. You're just going to say create, or you can add it to existing, which I've never done, but I'm sure it's helpful for some ways. And now in the same area where I created the form, I'm going to be able to go in and see a spreadsheet that was automatically generated for that form. This is particularly helpful um, because you can manipulate columns. Oh, it's still loading. You can change columns around. You can hide a column if it's going to be too much, if you don't want to see it because you're grading right there. Um, I always, if I do a test, a really big assessment, my first test one, like what I just did, would be my visible answer key. Oh, I don't know what's happening. Oh, okay. I don't want that. Sorry. Um, so my first submission will be me taking the test. So I have a visible answer key on the top and I could, you know, freeze that frame so that it's um, visible when I'm scrolling through and see quickly what they got wrong. A, B, C, D, vocab word, one, two, three. So that's just another way of manipulating data, which is great because if you know anything about um, Google Sheets, which is like Excel, there's so much data analysis you can do there. Like I said, you can squeeze things down. If it's a long response, you can make it longer. You can format it so it um, is a hidden column, right? So you don't see it at all. You can make it so uh, it wraps the text. So if it's a long text, you can see it in a shorter and a smaller space. So there's a lot of things you can do. You can sort by first, last name alphabetically. You know, I'm not going to go into all the workings of a Google Sheet, but that's available from your data you collected here, um, which is amazing. And when you read my blog post, you'll see how great that would be for like parent communication log and restroom logs and how that could be very helpful for you being able to manipulate that data to find one specific student's um, you know, submissions there. So that is some of the gist there, but now let me take you to the next level where you go into settings up at the top and you can make it so if you hit collect email addresses for students that gets complicated because they're like, I don't have an email, so just leave that blank. Um, you can limit it to one response if it's an assessment like virtual learning and you send out the test and you don't want them to be able to take it over and over again. I mean, you'd see that in the data that they submitted that they took it over again, that can help there. Um, if they want to edit it after response, you know, if it's a test, you might not want them to do that. So that's very cool. Um, presentation on here, you can shuffle, which is really nice for the test if you have students in the same space, you could have the questions shuffled around. So there's a very small likelihood that they'll be working right next to someone on the same exact question for cheating purposes. They could show their progress. So that's going to show section one of five, section two of five. So they kind of get a feel of how far they're doing. Um, they could, you can show a link to submit another response, which is um, nice for me when I'm doing some of my forms for like restroom breaks and stuff like that. Paul passes, you'll um, see that in my blog. And then confirmation message so this is where you're like oh congratulations you completed your assessment um, these are your next directions this is what I want you to do now and you could even hyperlink that stuff so it's pretty um, nice to have that there now quizzes and this is where it's a game changer because we just made the test but 
I don't like spending tons of time looking at tiny, tiny little letters and numbers on a spreadsheet, particularly it's not my cup of tea. So what you do is you just go here and originally Google didn't have this as an option and they listened to teachers and they made this so user friendly. So make a quiz. Um, you can have them the grade release. So if you only have multiple choice questions where you don't have to manually review and look at the long responses for like um, paragraph responses, if it's um, short answer, like one word or something like that. You could actually, I'll show you how that works um, a little bit, but where it can still be graded. Um, so it's like they, your students now get instant feedback. You could have them, you could change if they see like what questions they miss, what the correct answers are. You could change that depending on what you want, how many points each question was, so they could see where they were struggling and where they were succeeding, which is so nice. And don't get that from traditional paper pencil assessments because it takes a long time to do the grading. So I'm going to keep that right there and now I'm going to show you what to do on the form side to make that better. So I'm going to go back into questions. Um, we made these, we're not going to make an answer key for the first and last names because that would be ridiculous. But let's go over here, we have our simple multiple choice question. So now you see at the bottom, um, I can make that required if I want it to or not, um, the answer key part. So I'm going to click onto that and here's where I could assign my point values, three points for this question. I can choose B as being the right answer and this is a game changer. So if you're doing worksheets of it, virtual learning, um, remediation, in a classroom when you have 28 kids, it's really difficult to give them instant feedback that's individual for them. If they're struggling, if I have a student do reme doing remediation for assignment at home, oftentimes they're not going to have me with them to tell them how they're doing. So they go into their retake of their assessment not knowing if they did well on the remediation work unless I'm able to carve out time to sit with them, which I try to do, but you know, life is crazy. And especially with distance learning going on, how are you going to do that and keep your sanity? Here's a great solution. So you set, hit answer feedback. Um, you can show them the incorrect answers, what the correct answers are. So you could have for each incorrect answer, if they got it wrong, this is the message they get. And like, so this is the review going on, what's going on. You could have a video linked in there, a file linked in there. So many great things, you know, correct answers, good job, you figured out this. So many things you can add there for, I normally just do the incorrect answers so that when they get it wrong, they can see my, here's how you make this work kind of response. Um, here's what you need to know that you didn't understand, but so many options there. I love that. So you can do that with each of your questions. Um, if you go to this, we saw that with a matching, you go to your answer key. Um, each one could be for different point values. Right, that's pretty cool. So if there's one that's really hard that you're just making as a challenge, you can make it zero point values. Um, and then you click on which one's right and which one is not the answer. If it's multiple ones, maybe here it's like a vocabulary definition that can kind of be worked with both and you wanna give the students the benefit of the doubt, you can do that as well. Very cool, you can't do that a lot of times on your normal testing or you can, but not as easily. Um, so that's grading. And then I'm going to show you what that looks like when you go through. So once again, I'm going to go into the preview the form. And this is what, like I said, the link. So just so you know, if you're sharing your form that's created, you would just go here, copy that URL, send it out. You can shorten it on various websites, um, link it to a picture, link it to something in your personal website. Um, and that's great. So you're going to go through here. I'm going to make my answer choices, D, A, I'm just putting letters in to make this fast. I'm going to go here, cat. Cat is my answer, three points. I'm gonna go here and get one wrong, one right. But did you see that um, before I selected it, it didn't let me, there was a red button there that said, move, can't move on. That was just our reading in our pictures. Oh, I can do my score instantly, right? I can see which answers I got right, how many points I got, correct answer, what it was, and then this is where your feedback would be for them to see how amazing is that. Okay, so last thing um, that I want to explain, I know this video is getting long, but there's so many things you can do with Google Forms that I want you to be able to take this and make it work for you because it's so valuable. So I'm gonna go back to questions, I'm in my editor. Say I'm sending out a test, but because I like to plan ahead, and this is what I like to do, I like to have all my quizzes um, and remedi remediations and um, their final assessments 
on their website available to them from the very beginning. Now, because I, I've been teaching the same grade now, it's gonna be my fourth year, so I kind of know these basic things, what's gonna stay the same. PS2, if you decide to change things along the way, you don't have to resend out a link. It will automatically change it, and anyone that opens the link after you change it will get the updated version. So you can just do a shell of a test and the remediations, put it on your website so it's all linked there. And then when you know the content, add it into the questions. Amazing. Um, but so like I said, so if I have everything on the website, I don't want my students getting into it early. I don't want them to be able to cheat in that way, right? They probably want to think about it, but you never know. So this is what I'm going to do now. For my first section, I'm going to add a question, right? I'm going to make that question a short answer question. I'm going to make it required because if it's not required they can skip through and miss this really important way to lock your google form up so i'm going to make this answer the test that's the answer everything else is incorrect good but what now how do i do this i do this all the time let me see Response, sorry, okay. Response validation. So you're gonna to go to the bottom corner where it says response validation, which opens up a whole other level of Google form capabilities. So now I wrote in my short answer is test, okay? If it was a number, like an escape room for a code, I can make that a code escape room um, where they have to be equal to that exact number and if it wasn't that number it won't let you move on so that's where you could do cool escape rooms where it's like locked that whole section with the materials and the clues are locked and you can't move forward until sorry you get that number correct so that's very cool um be sure to make a custom error text like try again okay um so that's a number but we have a text. You could do length. You could, um, oh, that's for like if you're doing a um, short answer or written, you want it to be like this many words for an essay or something like that. But text. So I don't want it to contain the word test. I want it. Um, oh, yes, I do. Um, oh, yeah, there's so many options I don't use, but it's just because I'm familiar with it, but there's a lot you can do here. So it's going to contain the word test. If it doesn't contain the word test, it's going to say try again because that's my password I just created essentially to get to the next section okay so I just made that I'm happy with that right now remember it's test is question one so now let's go back to viewing it and now I have to enter test here to move forward but let me enter something else let me enter um, quiz. If I enter quiz, it's going to say try again, and I am blocked. I can't go further. It will only let me go on when I write the correct answer, which is my code. So if you're doing remediation or a retakes for a test and a student comes to you during lunch or something, you can have this available already on your website. They log in, but you come in here and write in your, your, your code to unlock it when they're in your presence. Or if you're giving a test to a large group of students. You get them all set up when they're all ready to go. You give them the five digit answer key or the, um, the unlock password key and then they all enter that in then and then they're um, able to access it. So that's really cool. You can even do that through virtual, um, like if you're in a Microsoft Teams or a Zoom meeting with your students and during virtual learning so that they hear the code and only then can they get into it when you're kind of monitoring the situation. Um, so that's really cool. Um, if you go to now response validation, oh, I don't want to go through that. You can see the questions, like I said, the summary for the questions, what look that looked like for each question. You scroll through here, how many got it right, wrong. Um, yeah, very cool stuff. So I think that is what I wanted to share with you. And I hope you followed along. I know I'm a fast talker and I know this video is longer than I actually wanted it to be, but there's just so much to learn here. And like I said, if I did a really bad job, which is very likely since I'm just kind of throwing this together to add to uh, my blog content, find it somewhere else. I learned all this by Googling and finding people that are way smarter than me that have done this earlier than me. Um, and that's how I learned how to do this. Also, if you want to know a little bit more about how I use these forms, I use them for hall pass logs, for um, parent um, communication logs, for obviously tests. I use them for escape rooms. 
read my blog. I have two separate blogs as of this moment about how to customize Google Forms to suit your needs. And those are some things I discuss and how I kind of set that up. So thank you for watching. I appreciate your time. I hope you got something from it. And I hope this makes your teaching experience just a little bit easier because we're all in this together. And with this virtual learning coronavirus thing that's been thrown on us recently, we're having to adapt really fast. And this is a great way to adapt if your county or your school doesn't have um, clear guidelines on how you do assessments. So hopefully you enjoy. Remember, my blog is mrswatsoneducation.com and I hope you subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye.